Hey everybody, this is Miss Glink again, and for the purpose of this video, we're going to be talking about point of view. So as you probably remember, point of view means, basically, who's telling the story? Is it told from a character's point of view, or is it being told by the narrator? So there's a couple of questions you need to think about before you decide who's t who is, or whether this is first person or third person. So first of all, like I said, who's telling the story? If it's the author or narrator, these are both the same, the synonyms, this would be third person. Because an author and a narrator is not experiencing the story, they're just telling about it, it would not be from their point of view. For, it would not be from first person point of view because the author or narrator is outside of the story. On the other hand, if a character is telling the story, you can bet it's going to be from first person because they're the ones who are actually in the story and they're the ones who are experiencing it. So if a character is telling the story, it's going to be first person. So first person, as I stated before, is when a character is telling the story. And there's going to be some pretty major, major keywords, clue words, that are really going to stick out and help you to recognize whether it's first person. Some of these words are I, me, my, we, and our. Of course, there's many, many different ones other than that, but those are what I call the biggies. It's also important to note that you need to look outside the dialogue. And what do I mean by that? Well, dialogue is when, character, when a character is speaking. So we can't tell whether this is first person until we, we basically want to ignore all the spoken words. So if we find all the quotation marks when a character is talking, I'll cross them out and still see first person clue words, then that's a pretty good indicator that yes, it's first person. Let's take a look at this example right here. So it says, I rode my bicycle up a steep hill. I was very hot and exhausted. It was a long race but I was in lead. I raced down the other side as fast as I could. It began to rain a little and I could feel the cold wetness on my face. So I need to look for those clue words. Well, what do I remember about those clue words? I know that I was one, so but from, before I circle any, let's see if there's any dialogue that I need to cross out. Okay, so I don't see any dialogue because I don't see any quotation marks, so I'm safe. So I'm going to circle all those I's. I was a huge keyword. Let's see. I. All right. Now, I'm going to look and see if there's any other clue words. And I'm going to look over, because sometimes I have a hard time remembering. Let's see, I see... I got some eyes, and I uh, have, there's me, my, we, and our. So let's just see if there's any of those words on here. Oh, I see my right here. So that's important to circle. Basically what I'm doing is I'm proving my answer. This is how I mark the text. Now I don't see any other keywords, so I'm going to write them down. I see I and my. So that tells me that this is first person, and I'm going to put POV because it stands for point of view. Now looking at third person point of view, that's a lot different than first person. First person was when there's a character in the story who is a narrator. Notice the difference here. It says third person is when the author or narrator is telling the story. Remember, if they're 
the ones that wrote the story, they're not actually participating in the events. So they're, in a, they're like an outside observer. So again, it's really, really important to again cross out all of your dialogue because that will get in the way of trying to figure out which point of view a story is written in. So just like first person, third person has clue words and they're, some of them are right here. So there's words such as he, she, him, her, they, and them. So a lot of people also like to say that characters, names, would be good keywords. Now, you have to remember, characters' names are also in stories that are written in first person. So I would try to avoid using characters' names as proof for third person just because they are in all types of books. So I would stick to the clue words right here just to really make your proof stronger. So here's an example right here and the cool thing about this passage is that it's going to sound a lot like the one we just read a couple slides ago. It's just going to be written in a different way and you'll see what I mean in a bit. So it says it was a hot day and the bicycle racers were off to a great start. Shane quickly ran, went ahead of the others. His face was red hot and he began to sweat as he went up the steep hill. It started to rain as he began down the other side of the hill. So you probably already figured out why this sounds familiar. Yep, you're exactly right. It's the same passage as before, except for it's written in a different point of view. So let's look for some keywords here. So let's see here. We're looking for words like he, she, him, her, they, and them. So pronouns. Let's see. And I forgot to mention first person point of view keywords are also pronouns. So pronouns are basically just words that replace a person's name. I do see the name Shane, but I'm, like I said, I'm going to try to avoid using a person's name to prove it. I want to look for those pronouns. So I see his, that's a big one, um, and he, another he. This is These words are replacing Shane's name. It started to rain as he began. Okay, I believe I have found all my third person pronouns. Now I'm going to write them on the side right here. So I have his and he were my main two pronouns. So those two prove that this passage is written in third person POV. Notice I did not circle Shane. I was able, able to prove which point of view it was written in without saying, well, it has a person's name in it. So right here, we're going to look at a couple of passages, and they're both really similar. They're both talking about the same thing, except for one is written in first person, and one is written, or the other one's written in third person. So what we're going to do is we're going to read each passage aloud and do the same process as before. Circling, we're going to avoid pre people's names and animals' names. We're going to focus just on those pronouns. So I'm going to read number seven first on the left. So it says, Scrat the squirrel sat on a fence watching Cardinal. The Cardinal had an acorn and Scrat was wondering how he could get the acorn from the bird. The Cardinal rolled the acorn across the sidewalk, pecking at it. The bird really wanted the acorn. Scrat licked his lips, thinking about how delicious that acorn would taste. He twitched his tail as he tried to decide what to do. So 
based on the fact that Scrat is capitalized, I can infer that's probably the name of the squirrel. So I'm not going to circle that. But like I said, I'm going to look for pronouns. Let's see here. Oh, I see he. And the bird. There's his. He's licked his lips. And he twitched his tail as he decided what to do. Now, I have a pretty good idea, but I'm not going to write it down yet. I'm going to write down those keywords. I have he and his. So I'm going to read passage number nine, find the keywords, just to make sure I feel pretty good about what I decided in my head for number seven. So it says, I watched the cardinal roll across the sidewalk. Roll the acorn across the sidewalk. I could almost taste the acorn in my mouth. Oh, it would make a delicious snack. The bird was pecking at the acorn, trying to open it. I wondered how I might be able to steal the tasty snack without getting pecked by the bird's sharp beak. I twitched my tail to help me, to help me think of a good plan. Okay, so I'm going to use a different color to try to find those keywords. And I'm going to make this pen a little bit skinnier so that it's easier to see the circle. So I see the word I right here. I know that's a keyword for something. Let's see. Oh, here's another I. You can almost taste the acorn. Oh, there's my. My mouth. Uh, let's see here. Here's another I. I wonder how I might be able to steal the tasty snack. I twitched my tail to help me. Ooh, man, this one has a lot. Okay. I don't think I see any more in that one. So I'm going to write these key keywords down. There's I, my, me, and I'm going to just quickly glance over to make sure that I got all of them. And it looks like I did. So now I'm going to compare and contrast, well mainly contrast, these keywords. Based on what I remember, I'm going to go back a slide. Now, I see his and he was third person. And if I go back a couple more slides, I and my or first person. And for what I remembered about the difference between first and third person is that first person means the character was in the story. The character was experiencing it. So to me, the character who was experiencing it was definitely Scrat the Squirrel, of course. But he wouldn't go around saying, Scrat watched the Cardinal. He would say, I watched the Cardinal. So that means this second passage right here would be first POV. Which makes sense because I was thinking that this first passage, number seven, would be third person POV because it has Scrat's name and it uses the pronouns he and his. So it's the way it's written, it makes it sound like the squirrel, like a person is ob observing the squirrel and describing what it's doing. And whereas passage number nine, it's almost as if the squirrel was writing a journal entry and saying, hey, this is what I did. This is what I was thinking. So we wouldn't get that information about what he was thinking and, want and wanting without having it written in first person point of view. So I hope this helps understand or explain the difference between first person and third person. And I hope you enjoyed it.